Well, hello again. In the last two presentations, you saw information about how to conduct a major countywide waste characterization study, and also how a food sort was conducted at an Illinois community college. Now I'm going to show you a few tips and pointers about how to conduct a simple waste sort for your own household garbage so that you can determine what can be recovered for recycling, maybe shouldn't have even been there in the first place, what could be recovered for composting, and what small amount might actually really have to be discarded. Now the number one material in our garbage in all of America is paper. So leave yourself plenty of room. Come outside on the driveway or in your yard or if, even if you live in an apartment you can do this. Just spread out an old shower curtain or a blanket or something on the floor. Put your sack of garbage in the middle and lean down. Leave yourself plenty of room around it. Since the number one uh, type of garbage that we throw away is paper, leave plenty of room close to yourself to sort paper into. If you live in a small household like mine with only one or two people, you might not have very much garbage in a week. Truthfully, I had to raid my, my recycling bin to get samples of the materials that go in a lot of people's trash in a week. Be good to yourself if you're going to do this. Pre-sort a little bit, put food waste into a plastic bag of its own so you're not actually handling the mucky food waste. I've got several little bags already sorted out in this bag of garbage just to give you an idea of what uh, categories there are. So number one, paper. This is called chipboard. This stuff that's on the inside of toilet paper rolls, uh, paper towel rolls, cracker boxes, crack macaroni and cheese boxes, containers for milk um, and or some sorts of juices like this. This is paper. It's a specially kind of plastic coated paper. But for these purposes, put it into that paper category, even though it typically cannot be recovered for recycling. This juice box, this is actually a, a soy milk box. This is called aseptic packaging. It too is coated, and it also has a layer of plastic and metal on the inside of the paper. This one I'm going to set aside separately. It no way, no how can be recovered for recycling in the downstate part of Illinois. Usable household items. This ruler, my reusable mug. I'm going to set aside into another category. Those things could have, should have been reused. Again, paper, styrofoam, a special type of plastic. And this is number six plastic. This doesn't look like styrofoam, but indeed it is made out of recycled styrofoam. Look at the number inside the recycling arrow on the bottom of plastic containers to tell you what kind of plastic that is. So set plastics in their own category. Again, a ribbon. This could have been reused. Um, more paper. Pull the plastic liner out from inside of it. Put that over here with the unrecyclable plastic. And this is a coated kind of paper for shipping. This cannot be recycled. It's plasticized. So let's see. I will put that in with the juice boxes. A drink container, like a drink holder from a to-go box. This is easily recyclable. These old Le Menu containers are number one plastic and easy to recycle. Virtually all juice boxes, excuse me, juice bottles and uh, number one soda bottles are number one plastic. Readily recyclable. Even freezer boxes can be recycled. The outside of a case of soda or in this case pet food can be recycled. This is number one plastic. Set it over there with the plastics. Metals. Aluminum. I'm going to set in its own category. Number two plastic is either shampoo bottles or milk jugs. In this case, it's a type of a small milk drink container. Set back here with the other plastics. Yoga containers often are number five now. It doesn't really matter. In most areas of the state now, we can recycle numbers one through seven plastics, except for number six. So unless they're not recyclable plastic, I'm going to kind of stick all my plastics in the same area. Here's more of that unrecyclable styrofoam and number six plastic. Steel cans, tin cans from my pet food containers. Set back here near the aluminum, a type of metal. Number two plastic. 
Okay, so down here to the bottom, I got a little bit of food waste down here. This is number one. It can be recycled. Foil also goes in with your aluminum cans and can be recycled. Now, your prescription containers come now with a, a readily removable label. The label is really sticky and sometimes plasticized. You just have to throw that away. It cannot be recycled. But the bottle sure can be. And the lid. They say leave the lids on now. They want all the lids for recycling. So again, a little bit of paper, a little bit more foil. And I've got a part of a rotten pear in the bottom of this sack. So I'm just going to weigh it sack and all as part of food waste. I'm gonna set this over here. Paper. Plastic bags can be recycled if you take them back to the grocery store. They usually are not collected in curbside programs. Foil containers like to-go food can easily be recycled as well. I don't even know what this is from. It's some sort of a spongy thing, like a piece of insulation. It cannot be recycled, but it could be reused. I'm gonna put it in the reuse category. Garden pots that you plant plants in usually are not recyclable, except maybe during special times of year. These do happen to be number five polypropylene, so they are recoverable. It's just that they usually are not accepted in a curbside program. So I'll put those over there in my plastics as well. And let's see. Again, to-go food containers, the foil can be recycled. Styrofoam, now I'm gonna put this in with food waste because there's part of a leftover muffin in here. Stood up real quick. Yeah, now this is where I put my food waste stuff. The egg carton can easily be recycled. Egg shells should be removed, and if not put into your compost bin, then put into the, uh, the garbage. In this case, I'm going to put my egg shells in with some food waste and put the egg carton in with the paper. So there's my food waste pile. Let's see. Got part of a bottle here of dressing, salad dressing that went bad. Now, the bottle itself is recoverable. The dressing is not. There's not very much dressing in the bottle at the bottom of here. So I'm going to set this aside for the glass category. Got a yucky little leftover bit of a cheesecake here. It goes in with the food waste. Its container cannot be recycled. A sack of leftover nacho chips that are yucky and old. And the rest of this stuff is like a leftover sandwich. Some things like that. Again, the plastic bag is very lightweight. I'm just gonna put all of the food waste into its own bag and weigh it as its own category. One last note, landscape waste is banned from Illinois landfills. So it has to be set aside. Leaves, grass, that sort of thing have to be raked up and set aside separately, typically collected either in paper yard waste bags or containers specifically for a yard waste route, not blended in with garbage. I have very little of that in here. I will take the time to set it aside over here with the food. It's probably not going to weigh on my simple bathroom scale. Understand, though, that if yard waste were not banned from Illinois landfills at certain times of the year, yard waste makes up to 30 or 40 percent of the overall waste stream, mainly in spring and fall when we're doing a lot of that raking, okay? In your uh, waste sort, we probably don't really expect you to manage or waste, uh, weigh much of the landscape waste because it is banned from landfills. It's just something to be aware of that could be set aside easily for composting. When you've got your categories all arranged, okay, here is my pile of plastics, some of which are recyclable and some of which are not. Here are my piles of metals. Here's a pile of paper. Here's a pile of paper that is not recyclable. Here's the only glass container I have, although sometimes I do have more of those. And then I have food waste. What you do next is take your bags, Set them on the bathroom scale, and then take note of that category and write down its weight. 
and do that for each one of these categories. Just write down its weight, tell how many people are in your household, that this was one week's worth of weight, and then maybe do a little chart or a graph. Add up the total number of pounds and the percent of each of these waste categories. There you have it. You've done your own home waste sort.